and welcome to the Fallen in Love with Food Again show with MasterChef winner Jane Devonshire and all around plum and seed manager Gemma Oten. Round of applause for both. This is, this will be our, so we're going to film two today. So this will be episode five and six. I know, I know, it's really scary. That's it's mad. lovely. Everybody's had such lovely compliments. We've had people cooking for the first yeah. time, and we seem to be, if it just helps one, we said it would be brilliant, but we've had some amazing feedback, haven't we? So Yeah, yeah, it's been amazing. I think one of the ones that got me a bit teary was like how somebody said, you know, we often get forgotten as, as, as deemed as those with eating disorders, that, you know, we don't like cooking and we're, and we're scared of, of, of the joy of cooking. We're actually, that gets taken away from us but we love it and yeah. making it fun accessible to be in the kitchen again makes you remember what it is to live and to be alive so yeah it's been I, know, it's been got me too. I was like yay we've done it we've got this brilliant yeah so, yeah and I'm so looking forward to today because you've got two of my favorites today so today uh first one we're going to make some lovely stuffed lamb meatballs uh, on a caponata stew, which is a really light Mediterranean stew, almost like a ratatouille, but lighter. Nice. So it would go, you don't have to do it in the meatballs, you can do it with any of your barbecue stuff, your chicken, your lamb, whatever you're cooking over the summer. And then we're going to do some roasted stone fruits with some oh. crumble <laughs> and some boozy cream <laughs> because Gemma asked for it. <laughs> or you just list the alcohol out and we'll do it with some fruit syrup or some jam or something if you'd rather. So, what we're going to do first, what's our episode meatballs. five? Meatballs. Meatballs, right. Meatballs. I'm going to put on my god awful apron because we know Have what you ready? We know what happened last time, even though this is purple. Um, <laughs> you're getting your hoodie soon, aren't you? Yes, I can't wait. I was getting, well, I'm a little bit hot wearing it today cooking, but yeah, I'm going to be modelling a seed disorder hoodie. Yes. Which is fantastic. Seed, seed hoodie not disorder yeah i'm really excited we get what you mean i know Hello, the family. i'm there <laughs> we're here we're here right what do i need you need your lamb my lamb you got some mixed lamb yes so what is that just a mixing bowl yeah it's just a mixing bowl with lamb in it you've got a mi mixing bowl mine's a bit big sorry Everything in this house is super size me because I'm normally cooking for six or eight people. Everybody else, yeah, that's fine, that's brilliant. <laughs> I should have probably put it in a glass one, but yeah, mixing bowl. Um, got your lamb. And obviously you can do this with any meat you want. So you could even do it with sausage meat if you wanted, uh, or beef, I would, or pork. But I would be wary of using anything that's really lean like turkey or chicken because yeah. they can be very dry and you have to use a slightly different sort of type of thing when you're cooking with turkey or chicken mince. Yeah. If you need, this works. And any cheese. We're just going to do something that's quite Mediterranean. Yeah? Yeah. Put that in a bowl. Have we chopped our red onion today? No, I'm really not. <laughs> no, no, I've done my You were ahead of me on all the game and I thought, I'm not going to do it because Gemma had, you know, and then last week she's like, I've done it, it's all prepared. Uh, I was so prepared last week, but with everything that has been going on in the last two weeks, my brain has been fried and I've not been prepared at all. And that was one of the things that mum always tell, told me. The, the six Ps, perfect preparation prevents pathetic poor <laughs> <laughs> presentation. Six, but you know what the other P was, don't you? Yes. <laughs> um, so I'm, I'm sorry, mother. I have let you down. But it won't take me long. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm on it like a carb. Oh, sure. If you want to carb half of the onion, really quite fine, because that's going in the meatball. And if you, you don't want big chunky bits of onion, so half of it can be fine. The other half can be a bit chunkier if you want. So we're going to put half the red onion in the meatballs. Right. So chop them quite tiny if you can. And as I said to you before, the one thing I'd always say to people if you're starting getting into cooking is buy yourself a decent knife. Because actually, the sharper the knife, the less chance you've got of hurting yourself and the easier you can do these things. And a lot of times you see chefs doing things and you think, why can't I chop like that? It's nothing to do with you. It's to do with how good your knife is. Yeah, absolutely. I really have got a couple of knives. I've got lots of knives because it's my job now, but I've got a couple yeah. of knives that I use all the time. I quite like this shape, but it depends. It's up to you. This one. 
all different sorts. So it's up to you how you like to, what you like to feel and hold, but it's well worth it. Speaking of knives, um, I've been watching Top Chef. Yes. Um, it's all the repeats on Netflix, and it was like a Bravo thing that happened years ago. And Amazing. Their pack of knives. I love it. I'm like, I want a pack. <laughs> <laughs> Shall I show you mine? Actually, this isn't even half of mine. Look. Oh my God, I love that. See, it's my birthday next week. So yeah. this, big one. This, one, this one is really quite vicious, this big one. Yeah. I've got, and that's, I, and my, they're my best knives, my other knives are kept in a cupboard, which are absolutely, nobody's allowed to use them in my work knives, so. <laughs> I love it. Right, so I've it's got- It's of the trade, isn't it? So here's what you, you know, what you need. So yeah, we've got uh, lamb mince. Yeah. Half a red onion. Yeah. Just put in with the lamb mince. Oh, and that, we're going to finally chop that because we're going to cook it all at once. Two cloves of garlic. Two cloves of garlic. Yes. Yeah. Not yet, but nearly. Nearly. <laughs> oh, I can't believe I wasn't prepared. I pride myself on preparation. It's fine. And the other thing I was going to say, look, you know, if you don't use garlic a lot and if you don't use ginger, I know a lot of chefs will disagree with me, but if you want to use that ready grated stuff, if that means that it gets you to cook, it's fine. Yeah. Or you can buy the freezer ones. They come in little, almost teaspoon like freezer little boxes. Again, that's fine. And we spoke about not wasting things and you can freeze all this stuff yourself and your herbs and things. Yeah. But um, I, one of my pet hates is snobbery in cooking. I use dried herbs because sometimes you haven't got fresh herbs. Yeah. You know, it's, it's, well, don't, don't worry if you haven't got these bits and pieces. If you keep well, your lazy garlic. in this flat with me plastic. <laughs> <laughs> the same. All right. Too quick. It's rubbery is not good. Not good. No use what you can. So we're going to grate our two cloves. I use one of these. I, I grate my garlic or you can use a garlic crusher. No, do you know what? Um, Funny enough, I used to use my garlic press, but I find it easy to mince it and grate it now. It just do. I do exactly the same. Yeah. And it gets it all out. Whereas I find the garlic press often you waste quite a lot. So no, yeah. I'm. Saying, I have. Um, it's just so quick, isn't it? Yeah. I love the smell of garlic. It's and there's something really. I know I use it all the year round. But when I start cooking with these sort of a Mediterranean style veggies and garlic and herbs, it's something so summery about it. Yeah. It's just gorgeous. You know, actually, you know, since our, when we last did, we did the last one, you said about lemons. Yeah. I've really, you see my lemon? I've really got into like, oh. lemons. But interestingly, I've yeah. always been like, my go-to is either a staple sort of like shepherd's pie, which is mm. lovely. Mm. or it's like an Italian pasta, or it's a stir fry, and you often forget about the Mediterranean. Yes. Don't you? Yeah. I uh, cook um, an awful lot of Mediterranean food in the summer in particular, because I love, I so love my fresh vegetables and stuff. And when the kids were younger, it was a really great way to get them to eat veg. So say your kids won't eat a pepper in a salad. My, I'm lucky mine do most of the time. If you roast it off, yeah, it's brilliant. And if they really won't eat it, put a bit of cheese on it and then they love it. <laughs> so we're going to put in here one and a half tablespoons of oregano. You can use fresh if you've got it. Fresh oregano is not as easy to get hold of in the UK. So I just got really some. Is. Like in the shops now, there's everything. Yeah. Right. yeah but you live in London. <laughs> Where I live, not so much. Um, I'm trying to find my oregano. If you can't, um, mushroom or? No, I've definitely got oregano. We've got a mixed herb, a mixed herb, work. Oh my God. <laughs> Rosemary, sage, ground coriander, everything but. Ha 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 ha! I knew you were there, you little. Oregano. Yes. How much? Got it. Yeah. Uh, about one and a half tablespoons. Can you hear one me? Half. 
<laughs> that's exactly that's exactly what we want to see we don't want to see measurements and then you're going to put in a good i'm going to say a good pinch of salt like a good pinch of salt uh probably yeah and also a sprinkle of black pepper but did you see what i mean about flavoring with lemon how much it brings things together and you don't end up using as much salt i've um I've been using it in my soups more and more. I had some leftover carrots and butternut squash the other day. And I, Doesn't I, it come live? Really, you really taste the difference almost straight away? Yeah. Oh, I'm good. Oh, I'm getting there, Jane. You are, you are. And then we've got one egg. Yeah? One egg. One egg. Are we going to put that in? I'm going to put my gloves on, but you use your hands if you want. I'm happy, but that's the safety thing. So use this. And we're going to mix it up really well. Now, the great thing about this mixture is you can actually use it to make lamb burgers. If you, you could make a couple of lamb burgers and just make much bigger, yeah. a bigger lump of feta in the middle and grill them really lovely with halloumi fries or something so it's basically a burger mixture you're making we're just making it smaller yeah and you can obviously serve them with tomato sauce and pasta if you want so it's one of those great go-to recipes once you've got the basic one you can use it lots of different ways so you're going to mix it all up really nice it's all lovely and mixed together nom, nom, nom. and have you got your block of feta uh, now this one I did prepare because the shop prepared it for me. I bought cubed. Fine. Uh, that works. Is that all right? Yeah, that's fine. Excuse me, I'm going to sneeze pepper. <laughs> Bless you. Pepper up my neck. <laughs> and you right. know, I've totally forgotten, Jane. What? What have you forgotten? What was I meant to invest in the other week when you kept saying, that's about right? That's a mixer. Oh, a measuring spoon? uh no scales scales yes oh, we need scales i'm so sorry that's okay and they, they're not expensive they're just little cheap mine are only cheap ones from the supermarket but it really does help <laughs> it helps when you're doing um desserts and things yeah because if you're trying to make cakes or biscuits or something you have to be a lot more precise it doesn't so much help with safety to be honest you can judge it by eye but it's really here. So we're gonna mix it all together and then I flatten it on the bottom like this. Yeah. And to get equal portions, all I'm gonna do is use like, a, do it like a pizza. So you're just gonna cut it up, up like that and cut it into 12 equal portions. Yeah? Right. So if you flatten it on the bottom. Yeah. And then make it into 12 equal portions. Um, that's how you get so you know roughly each one will be the same size. Right. Uh, yay? I think so. You got your egg in there? Eggs all mixed in. It's all mixed in. Yes. Right. It's all mixed in. It doesn't matter if it's not precise, it's home cooking, but it just gives you a rough idea because you want to cook them all the same. So if they're all roughly the same, it makes cooking it a lot easier. Oh, I can count. <laughs> Yay! Yay! Oh God, brownie points for me. Lovely. Remember when, did you ever do brownies, Jane? Yes, I did. I did my Girl Scouts and my brownies. I was a good girl. And you'd get your, um, your badge for, um, oh God, was it hostess with a hostess or something? Yes. You have to sew it all up your arm, badges all up your arm. Yeah. I think I was in the Pixies. Do you remember? Do you remember the thing, Gemma? I think I was in the Pixies. You, you know, you have to do, what is it? I promise to do my best to do my duty to God, to serve the Queen and help other people, and to keep the Girl Guide code or something. Oh. Well, that's a verse from the past. Where did that come from, my brain? That was 40 oh. years ago. <laughs> 
my favorite was bind us together lord bind us together <laughs> then i'll be broken <laughs> sorry we digress i know i love right. right so you've got your little ball of yeah. your mixture yeah. yeah just make a little ball and just flatten it in your hand get your piece of cheese push it in the middle and roll it round Right. Yeah, so we're literally gonna just roll it round. Oh, it's in brine. Just I drain it. it, just take some out with a spoon. You probably don't want to drain it all because you might waste some. So, we only want 12 bits. Yeah, you just take some bits out with a spoon. They might just be a little bit big, you might have to cut them in half. Okay, oh no, they're actually quite small. Oh, there you go, perfect, absolutely. Well, there you go, that's another. I never knew you could get them in um, ready cut. <laughs> Where did I until I saw it and thought, there we go. But I never knew you could buy mozzarella and cheddar ready shredded together. I see. My, lo my son loves a toasty, so I've been buying that for Ben. See you teach They're wasting it. So there you go, you taught me something last week. There you go. I've never even yeah. looked at it. So you're just gonna make these Better in the middle. And you can use any cheese you want. So if you're making these with mince, you could put blue cheese in the middle if you wanted. Cheddar, um, mozzarella, whatever cheese you like. As long as it's a hard cheese that melts. So I wouldn't suggest using something like a camembert or whatever, because it might work, but I, I think it would be... A bit, a bit slightly of that, wouldn't yeah. it? Yeah. But if you've got a cheese like feta, Halloumi can go a bit hard. I think it's one of those cheeses that needs to be eaten almost as soon as you cook it. Yeah. Um, but certainly mozzarella, blue cheeses, cheddars, all of those. Mix and match and do what you love, basically. Yeah. And these again, Gemma, once you cook them, or you can freeze them. Yeah, and, and do you them for You can freeze them if you don't want to cook them all. And I couldn't do less mince because you do have to put an egg in and obviously to bind it, if you yeah. did less mince, it would be too runny. Yeah, I get that. So some recipes you can't halve, really. I went to the local um, halal, is it halal? Yes. Halal butchers to get my lamb mince. Yeah, lovely. They also sell goat mince, I believe. Ooh which um, I know a lot of people don't eat, but it's lovely. And if you have dairy or you eat goat's milk or whatever, you should really eat goat because all the little billy goats don't get used otherwise. Oh, I didn't know that. So, um, yeah, it's quite... Just all these different things I learn on my ways about the country, talking to farmers and stuff. It's so interesting. You cracked me up the other day, though, speaking of different people cooking with. He'd had a morning cooking with me, which was an absolute shambles. And then and then you was with the all these, like, lovely corporate, like, people who were doing yeah. <laughs> I was like, oh, bless her. <laughs> oh, no, don't be daft, no, don't. This was, um... actually, I'll tell a story later when I do it, but it's quite fun. Different, one or two, the um, greatest thing about doing this is, I suppose, like, if people meet their rock stars, one of the best things about winning MasterChef, I suppose, is that I've met and worked with the equivalent of my rock stars. Yes. So who would be your absolute heroine or actor or hero of an actor to work with? Um, can I have two, a man and a woman? Of course. So one is Julie Walters. Oh, yeah. So I just think she is amazing and like her career and everything and like how versatile she is and I just think she's wonderful and the other one is Sir Patrick Stewart because um I think I've told you before but he's been like a mentor to me for the last sort of 11 years and um, wow. since going to drama school and the day mum got her MBE for seed and he was knighted so I was there with Patrick and mum and it was amazing, but we, you know, we're, we're friends and we email and he supports me. And he said to me that day at the, um, at the palace, he said, we will work together one day, Jo. Um, so that would be my dream to-, to, to Oh, that would to be him. so incredible. Yeah, I love yeah. his, um, 
I could watch him and T Ian McKellen any day. Oh, they are so funny. So I went oh, back such great friends and they're just so funny and lovely. They're amazing. I went backstage when they were did creating for Bodo. Mm -hmm. And then I got a big sweaty hug from Ian McKellen in his dressing gown. It was hilarious. Oh, that would be my dear of heaven. He's one of my absolute heroes. So is this Patrick Stewart though. I'm such a Trekkie and such a geek when it comes to stuff like that. So yeah. X-Men oh, yeah. and you know, he's more serious roles. I, I, he's lovely. He's just fabulous. <laughs> and he loves cling film. <laughs> yeah, I'm just gonna cling film them. All nice and done, so I should show them before. And we're gonna put them in the fridge. Anything like this, um, make it the day before and put it in the fridge. If it's chilled when you cook it, it holds itself. You, yeah. If you can cook them straight away, but you'll find that they might disintegrate a bit. It was the same with the, um, the fish cakes. Yes, exactly. So I've made those twice since. They're amazing. They are a real favorite in this house. Oh. The fact that you put all the veggies in them and everything, I think is, you know, really helps. They are so good. Right, let me pop those in. Ab. Uh, uh. Ruby's food out. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, my fridge. It's not like you were so like my children, you leave all your cupboards out. <laughs> Oh dear. Will you shut the cupboard door, Gemma? <laughs> I'm only joking. Right, I'm going to show you a trick. And this is, we were talking about food heroes. And I, I have had an opportunity to work with some amazing people. But after I'm on MasterChef, one of my first people that I worked with was Carluccio. He was a fantastic Italian cook. And he told me that, because my children would eat aubergine, I said it was too oily. And he told me that if you chop it up yeah and put it in water then as it cooks it expels the water and crisps up so it doesn't soak up the oil yeah so we're going to try that because when it gets oily it can be quite unpleasant yeah i find that it's quite it's cool. in a sauce, it's bowl that you've got a little bit of water in it doesn't have to be a bowl it's a saucepan it's fine So right? ever since then, I chop my aubergines before I use them and I just put them in water for about 20 minutes. Um, How do you chop? Ah, do you lock the top off? Yeah. I'm just going to chop them so they're like this. I've got to cook, just oil them and salt them and they're fabulous on the barbecue. Ooh, like that. I've got two small ones. Yeah, I think we only need one because like all these things, the size of your stew depends on how big your vegetables are. Yeah. But we want to chop them into just centimetre. So you don't think I need to use two? <laughs> I'm sorry. I've got the pepper on me. <laughs> it's under my nose. I'll move the pepper. Right. Okay. Sorry. So you don't think I need to use two? No, small. I would just use one. One. Because by the time you've got one courgette, one pepper, the rest of the onion and that, it's quite a hearty stew. I've got a huge aubergine here. I'm probably only going to use half, actually. Okay. And I'll put the rest in water and do it on the barbie tonight. <gasps> so I've been, um, oh God, the other reason things have been a bit mad is because, and I don't mind this being on the, on the show, like, you know me, I'll say it as it is, is because I've been, it's real life, and it? I've been having to look for a new flat. Okay. Which is a bit, it's not, not particularly the nicest news, um, but you know, it's life and it is what it is and people sell flats and you have to move on and et cetera. Yeah. However, I found a flat that I've fallen in love with. Oh, wow. You would so approve of the kitchen. <laughs> it's like, and, it's, I, and, and as soon as I saw it, I was like, oh, when we're allowed, Jane will love it. She'll love it. Oh, and I can't it, wait to see it. It's like a little cottage in a flat, in a house, if that makes oh. sense. So it's like a little gallery kitchen, a bit a bit like this, that way. But it's got like the, pa the hanging pans and, and pots off the ceiling. Oh, 
so fingers fingers crossed oh fingers crossed for you that's so exciting my eldest son has said a similar thing and he's got a couple of months he moves into his new flat so the first time since before he went to university he's actually back at home so he's back at home i know i know so one went two weeks ago within a day the other one rang me and said can i come home oh <laughs> revolving door. but i bet that was nice though yeah it is lovely to have him home I so what you've got here, you've got your aubergine. Yep. You're seeing it in water. Yep. And normally we'd leave that sitting for about 20 minutes. Yeah. So we're gonna pretend we have, because we haven't really got time. So you now wanna put, we're gonna cut the rest of our vegetables up because I think the best thing to do is prep before you get started. Yeah. So we're gonna rough chop our courgettes. Yeah. Um, and the same, I tend to cut. I tend to cut things long ways. You get it more. It's e easier. And then cut into the same sort of size dice as your aubergine. And this is a rustic veggie stew, so it's not. Don't worry too much if everything's not precise. But you want things to cook evenly. So you you put you've halved it long ways, and now you're chopping it up. Did this. And then chop. It just, um, I find it easier. It's quicker. Yeah. And if you try and cut it into rounds and then cut it into squares, it just takes longer. So, your courgette. We've got half our red onion from earlier. And yeah. we also want to cut our red pepper. And I do that. I just cut the ends off. And then I cut around. Cut around and into under the seeds so we don't waste any so you end up with a seedy bit which we can just throw away and hopefully bits like this with no of the white on and again just chop those into the same size as the courgette now if you don't eat all of this this is another thing you can freeze yeah and use it for pasta sauces right so don't think that you know because we're doing one of each vegetable yeah um don't think all well, that's going to waste it isn't it's lovely or you could even um blitz it up add a bit more flavoring and you've got a lovely summer soup Ooh. so you know none of this stuff goes to waste we don't do food waste no don't like food waste no so is is that like a cold summer soup like sorry a summer soup is in you'd heat it or like a gazpacho type thing you could have it cold i would heat it i must admit i'm not the best with cold soup i don't quite get it my personal thing i don't know why when it's growing up but i'm not that good with cold soup and then we're just going to cut our green olives into quarters i'm just leaving these veggies on the chopping board for now yeah right? that's all we're doing they're all going to go in at the same time so i'm suspecting that you have a big chopping board. Chopping board. <laughs> my chopping board floor. Right. No, mine isn't. You can see. I designed my kitchen. Amazing. And my friend made this chopping board for me and put it into the kitchen. Um, this is way before Master Chef days, and everybody was saying that's so extravagant. It's the best thing I ever did. Oh, love it. So hang on. I you use it, as you can imagine, all the time. You're quartering these, yeah? Yes, just quarter your green olives. These have got cumin and lemon. It's fine. It doesn't, it, if you've got flavouring in it or garlic or whatever else, if that's your favourite olive, use it. So I said to you, it's really not, um, it's not one of those exact recipes. It's definitely not a recipe where, that's the thing about baking. Baking has to be a lot more precise. Yeah. In all honesty, Jane, I don't particularly, I'm not a massive fan of olives. That's why I just got a small cup. That's but, fair. I myself am the same. I don't sit and eat pounds and pounds of olives. No, I don't my it. kids do. But um, what I do like to use them in sometimes is cooking. Yeah. Because they add a saltiness and a brine that you don't get from other flavours. Yeah. So, you know, this is why I've not put money in. And again, it comes back to personal flavour. If you absolutely love olives, Pile a load more in. I don't want this to just taste of olives. 
But I, I like doing it like this because it's the whole point of the show, isn't it? It's like falling in love with food again, like stuff. Yeah, like you're trying different things as well. Yeah. And then the final thing I'm going to do is rough chop my parsley and I'm just going to take a handful and put it to one side. And that's only to sprinkle on stuff to make it look a bit pretty, <laughs> hopefully. All about pretty. All about pretty. But again, you don't have to do that. I was uh, I went to get my parsley from the market, North End Road Market, and I said to Terry, one of the Barrow boys, I was like, is that a flat leaf? Oh, I don't know. He went, just eat it if you eat it. We just flatten it a bit. In. And I went, oh, right, okay, yeah, that's a good point. Well, no, because curly leaf parsley, do you remember the really old fashioned type of parsley? Did your nanny used to make yeah. curly parsley sauce or something? Yeah. That really dark curly, quite bitter parsley. Right. So this that's an old fashioned parsley, which you do still use. And if I'm making herbals and stuff, I'll use it. But um, the, the flatter leaf one, which I think is much, I, it's much more gentler. It's not easy, it's much easier. And it's not as grit, it's not as stringy. The other one was really quite hard and tough sometimes. But it was so, like, oh, I'm getting it. I was like, all right, Terry. Right, I'm done. Yeah. You done? So the first thing we're gonna do is obviously turn our cooker on. Excuse me, we know this one is quite noisy. And we know this one. Put a medium heat and put a good splash of olive oil in it. And I mean, cover the bottom of your pan because it's part of the flavoring. So probably two, three tablespoons. I'm gonna into that. that. All right, Jane. Yeah? That's fine as a pan. Perfect. I'm just using this so you can see in yeah. what I'm doing. So olive oil. Yep. A nice big splash of olive oil. Because in this dish we're using it as a flavouring, as well as uh, something to cook it in. And then you take your, drain your aubergine, or I'm just going to take it by the hand, and put it into the olive oil. And we're going to fry that off till it's nice and golden. Because aubergine is the one thing that I think is not very nice if it's not cooked. It's bitter yeah. and chewy. So we're gonna cook that bit before we want everything else done. Because the others we want quite nice and fresh and a bit with a bit of um, texture in them, a bit more. Yeah. We wanna get these uh, aubergines cooked off. And they can be done quite high heat so they're sizzling away quite nicely because we want to seal them so that it doesn't soak up all the oil. And this is where you really start to smell. When you cook things in olive oil, you start to really smell that olive oil, like mm -hmm. Italian kitchens. We'll take a little, we'll take a couple of minutes, so yeah. probably have to. My mum and dad are um, going to come here for my birthday, I think, and they were like, well, you know, seeing as though you're doing all this cooking with Jim, we don't need to book a restaurant, do we? And I was like, excuse me? Yes. <laughs> we out for our birthday, I do know. I'm looking at a restaurant. <laughs> yeah. They were like, why don't you cook for us? I think that's the thing. <laughs> Yeah, no, I agree. I think that um, we haven't been out for such a long time. We've all been stuck indoors. So yeah, I want to go out and eat, please. Thank you very much. But, right. Yeah, I agree. So where are you going? Um, there's a little... Um, are you frozen? Oh, we're back. You right? You've frozen too, hang on. You're back. I'm here. There you are. The connection oh, yeah, might be a bit sorry, gone away from um, it. Yeah, I agree. I think that <laughs> just toss that over and you want to get a nice golden brown on those. I'm 
but um, yeah, no, we, we froze then. But um, where am I going? We're going to go to um, a lovely little tapas bar on the common um, called uh, El Metro. So nice. So nice. Oh, you have to tell me. I'm in Clapham um, soon. Oh, let me know. I will. I'd love to go. Oh, I think in a couple of weeks I'll be up there. So if you're around, I'll yeah. um, definitely come in. So I'm not in until the afternoon, the afternoon. So yeah, we can have some lunch. Or... Oh, that'd be amazing. In our woolly jumpers, sit out and determine I'm going to eat. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So we're going to fry these off. Let's get them on a bit of heat. Bring them up a bit. Have you put yours up? Sing me down. No, it will take a while. You'll see them start to go lovely golden brown. They are. How are they, Mum and Dad? They're good. They're good. Um, just, just it's just been crazy at, at seed. Um, You've been getting so much press, though. It's been brilliant. Jen. Yeah, raising awareness has just been just wonderful, um, and more and more people are coming to us, which. It's a double-edged sword really because it's sad that so many are struggling but it's also brilliant that people are feeling able to reach out yeah and get help so for me I, I always try and sort of see it as a positive that these people yeah. were struggling anyway and at least now they're reaching out to get help so yeah. I think um I think yeah it's busy but I think mum and dad are just so proud of everything that you know we're achieving and, and the direction we're going so as long as they're happy i think it's so so incredible it's been brilliant to see thank you darling thank but you but it's really important and it's actually getting someone who listens to your message and i think when it comes to a place in the heart like you they know that you've been through it and they see how much you've struggled yeah. and then they can see you looking well on the other side of it and giving a yeah. really positive message yeah because I find that a lot when I talk about celiac or having a cancer or something, so many people are so negative about it. And obviously it's not a good thing. No, everybody would love to go through the world and nothing bad happens. But you want to say to people about the, the look at it, there is a, another side, there is a way yeah. out of this. Yeah. And you can be strong and fit and healthy. And so, yeah, I've been watching a lot of it. It's been incredible. Thank you, darling. No, oh, it's really doing well. I'm very, very proud to be working with you. And you, and you. I just need a bit more sleep, but don't we all? Oh. I need more hours in the day. I haven't done any social media this week because I've been so busy working. I've not had a chance to do yeah, anything. Well, let's get a picture. Can you good. see, I'm hoping now, this has started to go a really nice, can you see Gemma, golden, golden colour? Mine are. Nice and white and over and sealed, yeah? That's what we're looking for. I think mine are about done. Brilliant. If that's the case, then we're going to put everything else in, all barring a little handful of the chopped parsley. So in go the onions. Yep. <laughs> look, I could be at El Metro with my tapas board. Woo, look at you. Courgettes. Yep. Red peppers. Olives. And the chopped parsley. Oh, wow. And then the, see, the, the thing in this is um, we talk about balancing things with acidity. And we've just got one and a half tablespoons of white wine vinegar. Because we want to make it lighter than our ratatouille. I'm going to put that in. Sizzle, sizzle. you put your parsley in? Yep, all of it apart from a handful. And then we're going to put our garlic in as well, Gemma. The rest of the garlic, so another three cloves of garlic. Which you can chop, rub chop, or grate in, whatever. You want this to be a really this is just beautiful on toast. You don't need to have meatballs. It's just one of those summer dishes that I cook all the time. Mm. 
So the garlic in. And then you add a little bit of water. How are we doing? A little bit of water. Add about, about 100 ml of water to it, or, or you can use vegetable stock, whatever you've got. So if you've got a bit of green water that left over or whatever, you can use that. So about 150 ml, which is... Some leftover broccoli. Yeah, fantastic. Use about that much of that. That very, um, you know, great term. <laughs> so about 150 ml. Yeah. And then to bring it all together, about half a tin of chopped tomato. You say half a tin? Yeah, about half a tin. <clears throat> Oops. Flipping things in the next little pan. And I, I hope you can see that's not autumn, it's a lot fresher than maybe uh, ratatouille in the colours. Yeah. Obviously salt and pepper. Be careful on the salt because the olives are salty. Yeah. And we can all adjust that afterwards, so. And black pepper when I'm cooking Italian food because I think it's just a bit more. Authentic. Now that's going to cook down until those veggies are just nice and soft. But I'm hoping if you smell that, you can smell already. Oh, it smells amazing. That's what I love about cooking. I always wish that when you do these programs, you had a bit of smell vision. <laughs> And I think you need this acidity. Oh gosh, I'm throwing it all over my pan. You need this acidity to um, combat. Lamb can be quite a fatty meat, so you don't want something. You want something that's got a little bit of flavour and acid to to balance that out a bit. Yeah. I flicked mine. Making a mess. Right. So I know we had a longer list of ingredients today, but it's not, none of the processes are complicated, you know, they're all quite, yeah. only put, you know, it's quite easy to bring it all together. I'm just going to turn that down a little, it's a bit fiercely. Ah, brilliant. Okay, how are we doing? All in? Yeah. All done. It's bubbling. Do <laughs> so I need to turn it down? It's bubbling. Um. Yeah. So it's more of a simmer than yeah. a boil. We want to cook things through. Yeah. Lovely fresh flavours. Right. So what we're going to do now is turn. Get a frying pan or a, a deep pan. I don't mind what you use. I'm using this because you can see what I'm doing. Yeah. But um, you put about, uh, I want to say an inch, a centimetre and a half of uh, sunflower oil or vegetable oil or some neutral oil in there and put it on to heat. You can serve this with some really lovely little crispy potatoes or just a hunk of bread or just as is if you don't want any carbs. I love crusty bread. Yeah, just crusty bread is brilliant. We don't need um, some lovely ciabatta or something, it would be perfect. Right, so what about a centimetre? Yeah, so it comes about halfway up your meatball. You can bake these in the oven if you want, but they might break apart a little bit. 
Right. But, you know, if you're not worried about that, that's fine. No, um, I'm going to do it your way. I'm going to do it Jane's way. <laughs> A plate, I put some kitchen towel on mine just to soak up any excess fat. And your meatballs. Mine got a little bit squashed. I? So they're more patty, so I'm just going to round them. You can round them up as you um, with your hands. That's absolutely fine. And do you know? Does it matter really? <laughs> no. No. So I'm going to take a little piece of meatball because I a little bit left on the side, and drop it in. I want to watch, yeah. So that's not ready. It's dropped straight to the bottom of the oil and it's just sitting there on the bottom of the pan. Yeah. When it sort of comes back up and gently sizzles. That's when it's ready. Yeah. If you've got a thermometer, you can say 180, but, or a deep fat fryer, but I don't think most people have. As I say, just be careful if you're doing this around children because it is boiling hot oil. They can help make the meatballs and everything, but I would suggest they do this bit. Yeah. Right, it's beginning to sizzle a bit now, Gemma. So I'm gonna test it again. Perfect. And I'm hoping you can see in the pan, it's just beginning to sizzle a bit more ferociously and it's bubbly. And you can tell it's gonna cook. If you put them in when they're too cold, they'll disintegrate. What you're trying to do is seal the meat. Yeah, I think mine's ready. Yeah? And if you're not sure, always just cook one first to make sure. Yeah, fine. Okay. Now, I think today we're going to cook six. Now, if you put all 12 in the oil at the same time, the oil is going to plunge in temperature and they're going to go soggy. So I would always suggest cooking like this in batches. Right. Um, so if you just do six, which should be enough for your tea, I think. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. We want them to be gently like this. I don't want it spin all the way. So if you feel it's too hot, just gently bubbling. That's probably a bit too hot. And just turn it down a little, yeah? Okay, how's your stew looking? Amazing. It really doesn't take long once you've got it going. We don't want raw vegetables, but we don't want them soggy either. Yeah. I think I've just tasted one of my courgettes, and for me it tastes cooked. Um, I'm just going to taste the sauce, see if I need a bit of salt and pepper. Maybe a little pepper. So we spoke about this before, you are now seasoning to how you like it. So I think my stew is ready. My vegetables are lovely and whole and crisp and they've still got integrity, but it's all cooked through. So I'm going to turn mine off and again check your seasoning, see if you think it needs more salt, more pepper, more herb and you can add it in now. Oh, that 
that's amazing. Yeah, it tastes fresh, doesn't it? I love ratatouille, but sometimes it's very, very rich. And when you're, it's a lovely summer's evening, you want something a bit lighter. And I think this is a really good thing. But I just wanted to show people how bright and colorful that looks and how the herbs, the, the pieces of egg are still very much intact. And that's how long it takes. It's, what was that, 10 minutes? Yeah. Oh. Right, let's have a look at our meatballs. Let's turn them over. We probably need to do this a couple of times because of the ceiling. Are you turning yours? Yes, I've just turned mine. <laughs> Don't do that in the pan. <laughs> oh wow. How are they looking? Amazing. Good. So yeah, we I'm hoping you can all see if you're watching this at home that this pan is gently sizzling. It's not spitting at me at all. Um, and they're just cooking through. So if you want to get the meatballs cooked all the way through, um, but seal them in so they're lovely. You can make these into bigger patties and do them as a burger and put them on the barbecue or on, in the frying pan as well, just uh, as you would a normal burger. And they're lovely with a bit of olive and mayonnaise and roasted red pepper. Oh my God, they look amazing. Good. And did you see you've turned yeah. yours off? Sorry? Have you turned yours off? No, I haven't turned them off. I turned them over. No, your sauce. Yes, I have. If you think, taste the peppers and taste the courgette. No, I think they're done. Right. You want them still to have a really nice bite to them. They're not very mushy. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, they And if you're a veggie, if you put some... <laughs> she likes that one. <laughs> that might be your favourite so far. <laughs> But if you're veggie, just put a tin of chickpeas in or some haricot beans or butter beans or something. You've got a really lovely, you know, lunch with on toast or something. Yeah. Right. Now, how do you determine when they're done? Well, I think when they go all that lovely golden, you can tell if you touch them, they're quite firm to the touch. They're not soft. And they hold up. Right. So to me, I'll try and show you. Let me take one out. There we go. So I'm not picking out the top. This side is done because it's lovely and golden. This side, where I picked it up, it's burst a bit, but that's fine. So <laughs> it's a bit pinker and it's not quite ready. Yeah. Keep going. Just. I'd say a good two to a good three to four minutes on each side. And we don't want to burn them, we just want them lovely and folded. I can freeze the two, yeah? Sorry? I can freeze the two that I left over. Absolutely you can freeze them. Um a deep them before you cook them. Yeah? Yeah. Make sure you defrost them in the fridge because they've got raw egg in them. You take them out, put them in the fridge to defrost overnight. Right. I think we're nearly there. Yeah, me too. Right, you're going to take them out and put them on the... Are you putting it in like a bowl? I'm putting mine, well, at the moment I'm just going to take it out and put them on the um, kitchen towel. And that's, you don't have to do that, it just drains off any of the real oily bit. So I just take them out, put them on kitchen towel. Yeah. And I am going to serve mine in a bowl because but that's up to you. That's however you want. 
I'm just trying to figure out which one. Oh my god when i cook with you i remember that i really do need to start out my cupboards <laughs> <laughs> we all do we all do <laughs> uh, i have got so much stuff in my cupboards because we haven't got a garage at the moment so every piece of rubbish in the hat is in the house right so to serve you just want to put a really lovely spoonful of this beautiful caponata type mediterranean stew on your plate make sure you get some lovely sauce and then your meatballs, I think, on the top. And up to you how many you want. And then just sprinkle over a little bit of your chopped parsley. There you go. Oh my Gideon. This actually looks a little bit like yours. Let's have a look. Let me see. Oh wow, Jana, that looks great. Whoop, whoop. Really good. Well, now you've got to try it without burning your mouth. <laughs> and also, I just realised what I've done. I've just poured juice on my laptop. <laughs> oh my god! You see, I think I'm doing so well. Oh, you have. And then I show you when you cut into them oh, oh can you see me I'm oh, yeah, i can see you it's okay. not done yet i'm waking up little meatballs are full of beautiful melted feta cheese oh my goodness so um if you try one with the stew you tell me what you think honestly because you don't have to like everything we cook no i know Oh my God. <laughs> is that your favorite? I think it is, you know. <sighs> you could stuff these with goat's cheese or whatever if you want. So, you know, you've got to do what you like. And the whole idea is taking these recipes and making them yours. You want to put a bit of chili in the stew, you can. Um, I quite like this, just fragrant, lovely as it is, but entirely up to you. That is amazing. Good. And that, Jane, is is the end of episode five and i just think i've died and gone to heaven <laughs> that right. is a maze balls literally a maze lamb balls and what did it take less than half an hour oh wow thank you so much uh, you're so welcome oh my darling right let's get ready for episode six see you next time.